Hey, this is Pete from Strymon. I'm here with our new Compadre dual voice compressor and boost. Compadre is a front of signal chain, always on type of a pedal that gives some very uh, transparent and smooth compression along with an independent uh, boost circuit that has some different EQ options and uh, dirty and clean variability as well. In designing Compadre, we wanted to expand upon the capabilities of our OB1 compressor and that served as a sonic inspiration for us to, uh, to begin the process. So the two types of compression are studio and squeeze. And the studio is based on the very transparent compression familiar to uh, users of the OB-1 and other optical style circuits. It's a type of compression that, you know, you don't appreciate how much it's doing until you actually bypass the circuit. The squeeze mode is based on some of the uh, old vintage compressors where the compression was really a bit of an effect. It had a very long sustain, very high compression ratio, and we wanted to um, take a, a modern uh, look at that as well. The boost side of Compadre has uh, three different boost equalizations that allow it to be uh, very versatile and flexible uh, depending on the type of sounds you're trying to achieve and the, the type of uh, amp or rig you're playing into. The flat boost is a, uh, a wide bandwidth boost that just boosts the entire signal into your amp. The mid boost is a mid-range focused boost, which is really good for pushing an amp that's already on the uh, verge of being uh, overdriven. And then the treble boost is uh, to really push the high frequencies and really will tighten up a, um, a bass heavy amp uh, as well. The signal path in Compadre is fully analog under digital control. The input goes into a discrete JFET front end and then into the VCA uh, controlled compression circuit and then into the boost circuit. The digital control allows Compadre to respond to MIDI program changes. 300 presets can be stored and recalled with a MIDI switching uh, system or with our Multi-Switch Plus you can recall uh, three favorite settings instantly. So let's take a look at the uh, compression section. We're running uh, Compadre into Iridium straight into the computer interface. Here's the bypass sound. <laughs> We're going through the round amp in Iridium uh, with cap A, all knobs at 12 o'clock. Let's engage Compadre. Compression is something that is, is really more easily felt than heard. Under your fingertips, it really can make a dramatic difference. You know, in these videos, the difference may not uh, seem too apparent, but uh, that's why I'm going to be talking about it as well as playing. The compression has three controls. The first control compression, it varies the threshold above which the signal is compressed. So as you turn that up, more and more of the signal gets compressed. And as you turn it back at minimum, there is no signal compressed. So at minimum, this is just basically a straight uh, buffer. I turn it up. Now, by bringing the threshold down, more of the guitar signal will be in the area that's compressed. And as we turn it up, more of the signal gets compressed. That means more sustain from our guitar signal. So what compression does is it reduces the dynamic range of a signal. And that might sound like something that you wouldn't want to do, but the way it does that is by, it essentially tames the higher portion of the, of the signal to have less gain, and then you make that up by increasing the entire gain of the signal so that at those strong attacks, you can get a, a unity gain, but then as the signal decays, the signal actually effectively becomes louder than it was. So the, the result is you end up with you know, more sustain in the signal. So I'll demonstrate that by showing, depending on how hard you're playing, the effect of whether it sounds like the signal is being boosted or not will change. So if I play hard, and then engage the compressor, it sounds pretty, pretty close to unity gain. Let's say it, it sounded a little bit louder, so we turn the level back. So it sounds like that's pretty close to just a unity gain, but if I play softly, it 
there's a big difference in the perceived level at the lower volume. So what that is doing essentially is making the lower level signals louder. Um, of course, it does this dynamically, and um, that's how a compressor works, is um, to essentially give you more sustain. Kind of gives you a feeling under your fingers that it's a little easier to play, that the response is a little fatter, um, it's just a little more enjoyable and, and just kind of evens out the dynamics and, and uh, kind of puts a little bit of a finishing touch on things. The second knob on the compressor side is the level control, which works as just an output level for the entire system. Um, so louder, softer. Um, and that allows you to, depending on your compression setting and the drive control, which we'll talk about in a sec, you know, set a, a level where you can achieve a unity gain or a boost, uh, you know, at uh, various levels. The dry control is a blend that blends in the dry signal, and that is a really nice control to, to really define the attack of your signal. The compression can sound more pronounced with the dry level off because you're just essentially using the full compression circuit um, on the attack of your signal and the response of the attack uh, can come into play in terms of how it feels but you can kind of minimize that and, and make it more uh, transparent by bringing some of that dry signal or all of it uh, back into the circuit so let's check out the difference there we got a fair amount of compression on here um, with with no dry signal blended in if we bring in the dry signal and I, I can definitely feel under my fingers that the attack is a little more immediate there because it's coming from the, the direct uh, dry signal I'll turn it all the way up so now you get the natural attack of your guitar but still benefit from the uh, extra sustain from the compression For the squeeze mode, the thresholds are brought much lower, which means more of the signal gets compressed, and the compression ratio and dynamics are tuned up to allow for you know, very uh, large amounts of sustain and compression. What can be difficult in creating you know, very high levels of sustain and compression is um, trying to create a, a smooth decay. Many times what happens is something uh, called pumping, where as you sustain a chord, you will hear the, the volume level kind of vary up and down as the envelope essentially is, you know, changing the compression amount. So we spent a lot of time to try to make the squeeze mode to be as smooth a decay as possible in a very natural way, but still with a very uh, large amount of sustain. So let's uh, go to squeeze mode here. So with the compression knob at about 12 o'clock here. <laughs> So a very, very long uh, sustain happening there, but it was also very, uh, very smooth and nice, nicely controlled. It can be a lot of fun in this mode to, if you're playing some single note lines to really uh, allow the notes to ring out because they almost give you the sensation of acoustic feedback like when you're standing in front of a guitar cabinet. And again, with these high levels of sustain, the amount of natural attack is controlled by the dry level uh, as well with no dry level mixed in here. <laughs> You get kind of a soft attack, which is nice, um, as the compression is basically transitioning from no signal to signal. But if you're looking for something that's got a little more of your original attack in there, so there you've got really a tremendous amount of sustain, but a nice natural attack as well. Because the thresholds and dynamics of the squeeze and studio are different, you can really kind of choose the uh, experience for you. Like we can be in squeeze mode, but with little compression. And again, with it at zero, there's no compression. So you can dial in a little bit of compression in squeeze mode and you'll still get a response that's a little more kind of compressed and noticeable. So if studio mode was too subtle for an application for you, you can go to squeeze mode and dial back the compression and that would also give you more of a sensation of compression but not at wild you know, amounts.
So there's still a lot of compression there, but with it rolled back, it doesn't seem in your face in a sense, but it gives you a, a nice satisfying sensation of the compression. If I go back to the studio mode and turn up the compression, it's still, because of the threshold, the sensation of compression is less. So the studio mode is really for when you're looking for the most natural sensation of compression, and squeeze mode is when you're looking for something that is more apparently compressed to you, but uh, with the compression range, you can go pretty far in, in each direction. And the, uh, the range of the level knob is such that you can get a boost out of the compression side of Compadre on its own just by turning that uh, level up. So even with compression off, The compressor and boost can be used independently or together. Um, since I like the uh, com compadre compression, I'm going to keep it on here just to uh, uh, as a bass line. And now we'll add the boost. The boost uh, has a maximum boost uh, at, of 14 dB at its uh, highest setting. What's happening now, uh, going into Iridium's round amp with the knob at noon, the round amp is just on the verge of, of breaking up. So when I apply the boost, the signal gets louder, but also you hear a little bit more of um, harmonics, which I think is uh, you know, one of the great uses for a boost like this. If I turn the uh, drive on Iridium down, then we'll hear just the difference in clean level from the boost. The mid boost boosts the mid portion of the signal so that the lows and the highs are attenuated, and that's really great for pushing an amp that's already on the, the verge of breakup or tightening up a uh, uh, a bassy signal, so let's check that out. Another example of how uh, the mid can uh, really uh, push an amp that's at the verge of overdrive, we'll use the, the punch amplifier and uh, set it up with a little bit of gain and uh, here's what we got without the mid-boost. Now by push, pushing the mid-boost, so there I've turned down the mids on the punch amp to create a bit of a scoop, um, but pushing the front end of the amp with the mid boost so it can really become an effective kind of a drive pedal for you in, in that uh, situation. To demonstrate the treble boost, we've uh, switched to a Les Paul here to show how for systems that are really, um, you know, bass heavy, like the neck pickup of this Les Paul through the, uh, the punch amp, it's gonna have a lot of low end and using a treble booster can really uh, tighten that up. So here's the signal without uh, the treble boost on. The idea of the boost circuit is that it's tuned for, for many different situations and for a given guitar and, and uh, amp uh, setup, um, you know, you'll be able to to find the uh, the right EQ voice that's really going to you know work for your needs. Compadre also has a dirty boost, which adds some clipping elements in the boost path. This gives you another set of three flavors to uh, work with to uh, add a little more uh, dirt before going into the amplifier or next stage. So we're back to the round amp here in cab C with uh, the knobs at noon on Iridium. <laughs> Now we'll engage 
the uh, flat boost. The EQ curves are the same between the dirty boost or the clean boost, so this is the same mid boost curve with the uh, dirty boost uh, clipping going on. <laughs> Go to the treble boost. So the boost level control controls the signal going into the boost circuit. So when we're in dirty boost, uh, as we turn the boost level control up, we're driving the uh, the dirty boost harder. Now the, the topology of the dirty boost is uh, somewhat similar to. Um, a tube screamer type uh, soft clipping circuit, except without the associated EQ. The EQ is determined by the, the uh, three types of uh, boost EQ. What that means is as you turn the boost level up, the unclipped portion of the circuit will continue to, to get a bit louder, but the clipped portion becomes more clipped in a sense. So let's just uh, you know see what that uh, sounds like as I vary the boost knob. So here at low boost levels. <laughs> We've set it so that it'll start to clip at a fairly uh, low level so that you'll be able to dial that in uh, as you'd like. So as I turn it up, it's not getting that much louder. But it is getting more clipped and the uh, kind of dynamic portion of the signal uh, is, is coming up as well. Compadre has a volume jack on the back that allows you to plug in any TRS expression pedal and there's a separate VCA in Compadre that uh, will allow Compadre to act as a high quality analog volume pedal controlled from that expression pedal as well. We designed Compadre to uh, really be you know, a, a crucial element of uh, the front end of your signal chain, something that you can leave always on and have a, a variety of uh, you know, flexible uh, features to allow you to integrate uh, in your system in, in various ways with volume pedal and preset capability and EQ voiced uh, boosts that can be clean or dirty, uh, a couple of uh, great compression modes, just something that uh, we think you, know, you can find a lot of different uses for.